Welcome to today's episode. So just so you know, I just recorded a 20-minute episode and it didn't feel right. The whole thing. It felt messy. It felt unorganized and crazy. And I understand that there could be value in posting that as well. But I kept thinking, oh, I can just edit this out. Oh, I can just edit this out. Oh, I can just edit this out. And I don't want it to be that way. I don't know if editing is a good thing now because I would just sit there for a minute well, like 10 seconds, and think, oh, I'll just edit that out. And I don't want to do that. I wanted to be real and genuine and raw and do my very best to edit as little as possible so that you're just listening to me and not listening to some chopped, artificial 20-minute video or audio of me just talking, but it's all fake. I want it to be real. So I want to do as limited editing as I can. And because of that, I decided to start a new a new uh, recording and start from the beginning. So because of that, hopefully things will be a little bit more organized, a little bit more thought out, a little bit more detailed, and I hope it will be more meaningful because before I was jumping all over the place, I would remember something that I should have said related to a different topic, and then I thought, oh, I'll just say it right now, and I'll clip this pit and put it back where it needed to be, and I just decided that would be a mess, so... The reason I'm telling you all of that is to show you that I'm doing this imperfectly. I'm doing this my first time. I'm trying to start this all out and make it the best I can be. But I understand that I'm imperfect. So I know that this episode will be imperfect as well. But I want to save myself the trouble of going through the other one and editing basically everything. And just start with this one fresh and new. So from the very beginning... The title of this episode is It Gets Better, I Promise. And I'm not going to lie to you, I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven titles written down. I was laying there after a conversation one day and I started writing down all these titles. Some of them are super, super cringy, ridiculously cringy, and some of them aren't. And I sent a few of them to a few friends and asked for their opinions. And basically everyone said they liked the shorter titles better, so... Yes, so today I decided to go with It Gets Better, I Promise. And originally this wasn't on my list, but a friend suggested this title and I decided to go with it because it is related to my blog. And the interesting thing is when she suggested this title, I said I specifically decided not to put I Promise in there because I wrote a blog post September 28th, 2020. Whoa, 2020. (laughs) And the only reason I know that date is because I just looked it at look, just looked at it and wrote it down. So don't be too impressed that I know exactly when I posted something. Anyway, I wrote a blog post on September 28, 2020, and it's called Happiness Exists, I Promise. And so I thought, I don't want to copy that from my podcast. I don't want to put I Promise in there. And so all my other titles left that out. And I'll read you a few of them because they're actually kind of funny. They're so cringy that it's kind of funny. And you'll probably sit there and be like, that's not that cringy. But they are. Okay, here's number one. Proof it gets better. Examples from my own life. Number two. It gets better and my life experiences prove it. Think of like a surfer dude saying that. It gets better, dude, and my life experiences prove it. I don't know. That made me think of a super super surfer dude. My next one. Evidence from my life that it gets better. This is the last. This is the next one that I actually really like this one, but it's pretty long. I feel like it would be a good YouTube title if I had a YouTube account. But alas, I just post my podcast episodes on there. So anyway, it is Hope Is Not Lost, opening up about how my life got better and how yours will too. Originally, I had will, and then I changed it to can get better, and then I changed it back to will. And the reason I had will and how that kind of won is because I specifically wanted to talk about depression and how depression does not last forever. It ends and happiness comes and light comes. And so I wanted to stick with Will because I wanted to be very firm and very transparent that depression ends and that their life will get better. But I can see the other side of things with can get better because at some point 
there is a certain choice of finding happiness, but that is once the brain's chemicals are balanced. Because when they're imbalanced, no matter what choices you make, if they're imbalanced, then joy and happiness is really, really hard to find. So anyway, I originally had Will, like I said, how my life got better and how yours will too. If can fits better for you, how my life got better and how yours can too, that works too. But anyway, that's what I had for another title. I, and then the next one is The Best is Yet to Come. This wasn't originally on my list, but I added it. Taking out the long part and just having hope is not lost. And then another one is just taking out hope is not lost and putting a opening up about how my life got better and how yours will too. And then the last one is It Gets Better, I Promise. And once again, that one wasn't originally on the list, but it won out. So there you go. Uh, the reason I wanted to share all those with you is because... I want to share with you from the bottom of my heart that when I'm saying it gets better, I'm not just telling you some story or spouting crap at you that, oh, well, life gets better, hang in there. I want to show and share with you that I know life gets better because I've seen it in my own life, in my own life experiences, and how things changed and how the depression finally left. Yes, of course, I still have genes with depression. Depression is still in my life, but it is not prevalent. It is not constantly there sitting on my chest like it used to be. There's not a weight constantly sitting there that makes it hard to breathe. I think that is what is most important, that depression does not last. It doesn't always come back. And the reason I say that is because at the time, in the midst and at the peak of being really depressed, the only thing I could think of was it always comes back. It always, always comes back. I might have a month of joy and of freedom where there's not this huge weight on my chest and then it comes back. It always comes back. And at the point, that was what was true. That was the evidence I had in my life and so that's what I believed. Why would I believe something that wasn't happening in my life to prove that it wasn't true? And so I kept thinking it always comes back. It always comes back. And like I said, when you're depressed, your chemicals are imbalanced and so you have irrational thoughts. And one irrational thought that was really common for me was, it always comes back, there's nothing I can do, and when I'm happy, it's fake. It's not even real. Because when I'm happy, I'm going to be depressed again, so the happiness isn't even real. It's, it's not, it's fake. And then when I was depressed, it was really hard thinking that one day I probably will be happy. And looking back and being like, well, I was depressed, so does that mean nothing? Does that mean life actually is good? And so there was just this whole spiral of irrational thoughts that I thought about constantly. And it wasn't something that I chose to think about. It just was constantly on the front of my mind. It was constantly taking up my energy, my thoughts, my headspace, everything. I just always was thinking these irrational thoughts. My heart was always heavy. There was always a weight on it. It was hard to breathe. It was hard to do things. It was hard to get things done. It was hard to find joy. It was hard to find happiness because this weight was always on my chest. And then once again, when the weight left for a little bit, it always came back. No matter what I did, it always came back. The reason I'm telling you all of this, and I know I say that a lot, the reason I'm telling you, but it's pretty important, it's because I want to tell you from my own life and from my own experiences that life gets better and depression leaves and it doesn't always come back. I think that is so unbelievably important to know that depression doesn't last forever. It ends. And I'm telling you that not from above, waving down at you below and saying, hey, hang in there, it will get better. I hope you know that I'm jumping in those trenches with you and telling you, lift, this is really bad right now. It hurts really bad. And I know, I know I've know, i been there. I know it hurts, but I want you to understand that it won't always hurt. And the interesting thing with that and the ironic thing is that when I was depressed and someone said it won't always be this way, it really frustrated me and it really made me angry because in my life it always had been. And so when, told me so when someone told me that it wouldn't be that way, I felt like they were lying to me because my life evidence, the experiences didn't say that it would end, it said it would come back. So when people told me that it would end, my thoughts were stop lying to me. It's frustrating and it's invalidating and it's painful. And I didn't say that to people. 
unless they were a really, really good friend. I think I told like one person, hey, when you say that, it makes me feel worse. And they were like, oh, whoops, sorry. But anyway, because of that, I want to be very sensitive to those who are struggling because I don't want to say to you, hey, hang in there, it'll be okay. Because that's not what you want to hear. That's not what makes you feel happy. That's not what gives you a glimmer of hope. So I think first to give you a glimmer of hope, I want to relate and empathize with you. A friend, a very good friend texts me recently. She's really, really struggling. And she just said, tell me life gets better because I'm miserable. That's all she said. She texts me two things and that's what it said. So I immediately text back because I was awake. And I said, one sec, I have evidence. And I don't believe it's coincidence that I had already gone through my journal that day. I have a digital journal on my phone and I'm an avid journal writer, have been for my whole life. And on my journal app, kind of a fun feature is it has throwback dates. And so one of the throwback dates was from one year ago, two years ago, and then four years ago. So I guess I skipped three years ago because there wasn't one of those. But from three years ago today, there were several journal entries. The title of one of them is Nothing's Lifting the Weight Right Now. And some of the things I said is I'm scared. I'm really scared because school is just about to start up again and I'll be stuck in the routine, unable to escape. I'm really terrified for it. I'm also scared for all the things in the future I have to do. Go to seminary, figure out why I failed the English final and why I'm so dumb. Go to anatomy and feel frustrated. Take finals, stress, cry, write essays, do homework, do the dishes at my house. Clean, sweep, mop, clean, survive senior year, cry some more, college, move out, lose weight, eat better, stuff like that. It just didn't end. Wake up early, not get enough sleep, wait for the depression to hit again and again, wait for my heart to feel heavy. Wait for my body to just quit working. Wait for the day I drop. All of these things terrify me. I want to cry now. I'm going to cry later. I hate life and I hate that I'm here. Stupid, stupid. So that's from three years ago from January 3rd. Then another one's titled Life Equals Dumb. I've always thought life was freaking hard, but these last few years it has become apparent to me that life is so dumb. It always comes back to the basics. I wish I never existed. Then no pain. Then no confusion. Then no stupidness. My period should start any time now, and it's frustrating that I'm feeling so cruddy because of it. It makes me feel frustrated and invalidated. I just feel crappy because of hormones. That's dumb. I want to cry. Then another one. I put, it's getting to the point, once again, when I can't get out of bed. I can't breathe. I can't handle simple little noises around me. I can't handle the volume too loud. I can't handle the thought of going back to school. I can't handle feeling stupid. I can't handle the pressure and weight on my chest. I can't stop holding my breath. I can't stop grieving. I can't stop sleeping. I can't keep my eyes open. I can't think straight. I can't focus when all I feel is 100 pounds on my chest. I can't do it. I can't live when again and again and again my life is in ruins. When it is nothing but shambles, bits, and pieces of pain. Pain everywhere, strewn throughout my life. I can't do it. I can't. And don't you dare tell me not to use can't. Because sometimes you just can't. Once again, all from three years ago. And that was to empathize with that friend. I sent her those to say, where you are right now? Yeah, me too. So I'm not telling you, once again, from up high, waving down below and saying, hang in there, buddy. And you're like, you have no idea what I'm going through. So I wanted to start off with those to say, hey, where you're at? Yeah, me too. And then I sent her one year ago today. I said, well, I'm off to sleep. I checked the year ago entries and I'm astounded at the distance I've traveled since then at the happiness I have reached, at the accomplishments that have filled my life, and I'm so extremely grateful. And then I talk a little bit about what happened that day. And I said, also, a year ago today, I talked about having to survive my senior year. But actually, it's been absolutely amazing. I'm so grateful for it. I wish I could give my past self a big hug and tell her things get better. I sure love myself and the strength I have within. And then I said, we go back to school Monday. I am so extremely grateful we are going back to school in person. That is such a huge blessing considering that school district near us is doing a hybrid of online and in person. And then I ended the journal entry with, I can do hard things. I'll be okay. Good night. And that was a year after the three years ago. So that was two years ago. And then this year, or that day that my friend texts me, I had already written a journal entry about this. I just did the impossible, and it only took me three plus hours today. Not even kidding. Literally hours and hours. It genuinely feels like I just accomplished something that didn't exist, and I figured out a way to make it possible anyway. That makes me happy. That makes me feel awesome. It makes me feel like a rock star. I was able to edit the two clips of my podcast and put them into one, and it took me a a long time to do, but the fact that I finished it 
gave me so much happiness and satisfaction. I said, I'm telling you, it feels like an impossible task. As I unlocked one part of the mystery, three more locks showed themselves and I had to find the keys to those two. It's simply a miracle I figured it out. And the best part, I learned a lot. Like a lot, a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And now I can skip steps 2 through 27. I made those up because I know what to do next time. That's my favorite part of all of this. Yeehaw! So that was the journal leaf. Journaly. <laughs> that was the journal entry from that day. So I sent her all of those. And then I sent her screenshots of my mood charts the last few months. My journal app has this cool feature where when you write a journal entry, you can put a mood on it. Like a super green face, which is super happy. A lime green, which is happy, but not as happy as the first one. And then there's a yellow face that's like a straight face. An orange face that's a little, little frown. And the red one's distraught and super sad. My mood tracker from the last few months does not have one single red on it. Not one single one. And the thing is, I could write an entry with a red one, but I could also write an entry with green one. It would average them out to like a yellow one or something. The month of December of 2022, I had one orange day and one yellow day. And the rest were all green, either really bright green or a lime green. The month of November... I had two yellow, the rest were green. A different month, I had a few yellow, one orange, and the rest were green. And the rest were green. Another month, all green except two yellow. I love those mood charts because before, my mood charts were consistently red, consistently orange, consistently struggling, depressed, lots of weight and sadness on my chest from these imbalanced chemicals. Now, the last several months and the last... Honestly, year since FSY, FSY did a lot for me, helped me out a lot. I have been feeling extremely happy and extremely joyful. Things definitely come up in my life that are hard, things that are super stressful, things that make it a little bit hard to breathe. But because my chemicals are balanced now, it's so much easier to deal with all of the things that come up because I know happiness exists and I continue to feel it and I continue to feel that happiness and that joy. I text that friend and I said, did I convince you at all? Did I give you a little bit of a glimmer of hope? She said, eh, a little, but it's it's hard to see where you're at right now. I just can't see it. I said, totally get it, totally understand. Her texting me gave me the courage and the idea to come up with this podcast episode about how it gets better. And right now, it may seem that it can't, that it won't, that the depression comes back and that it will always hurt, it will always be painful, it will always be hard to breathe, but it's just simply not true. Because joy does come, the sun does rise, there is a light at the end of the tunnel, and then when you do finally find that happiness, you realize that there were little lights all along the way, you just couldn't see them. Because this is a continuation of the blog post, Happiness Exists, I Promise, I want to read part of it. I put, Depression is like a ton of bricks constantly sitting on your chest. It is the filter of gray on everything around you, so light can't get in. It is an iron door blocking your heart from feeling joy, the spirit, hope, happiness, and love. Depression is a weight tying you down and pulling you under. Depression is the rocks in your pocket when you try to go swimming. I know from first-hand experience that amidst the darkness and the pain and the suffering, happiness simply doesn't exist. It doesn't feel like it exists. It doesn't feel like it will exist. It doesn't feel like it ever did exist. It doesn't feel like there is any hope at all. Some learn to master the mask. Some learn to fake it so good that you don't know the truth. Nor do you even suspect a thing. Some learn to smile and to laugh when they are actually screaming inside. My message is to you. My message is to those who want to pick up on the signs. My message is to those that need hope and those who want other loved ones to find hope. I talk about having depression since I was a little girl and things happening to me that made life really hard. And then I talked about how things changed, and how I knew that happiness did exist. I'll put a link down below so you can go read it. I wrote down, like I've already said before, it always comes back. It never goes away. It hides in the shadows and waits for the perfect opportunity to pounce and drain me completely. It always comes back. It always comes back. Why even try when it always comes back? It's going to come back. That's what I wrote in a journal entry. And then in my blog post underneath that, I said, I am here now promising you that happiness comes. I am promising you that those days go away. I am promising you that the pain leaves. It is so wonderful. It is so touching. It is so magnificent. It is so marvelous. It is glorious. I'm not going to lie to you and say that depression will never strike again, but I know with 100% certainty that it doesn't last. Hope creeps in. Light overpowers darkness. 
It's just true. It's just true that light overcomes the darkness. It always and forever and ever and ever and ever will. Darkness doesn't win. It just doesn't win. I know I'll have a second part to this episode because I have a lot more to say and there's a lot more I can talk about because I am so passionate about this topic and it means so much to me. I just want to finish with this quote and then I'll share the word in the quote of the day, but when I say quote, I mean from my blog. Though the pain is deep now, though the pain is excruciatingly painful and heartbreaking and taking everything you have to take another breath, Though the pain and depression are sitting there on your heart, blocking love, joy, and hope from getting in, there is nothing worth living for. The best is yet to come. The happiness you so deserve will come. The overwhelming joy that floods your heart and veins will come. The warmth and the love you cannot feel will come. Why? Because the best is yet to come. Even after we pass away and are done with this mortal journey, the best is still yet to come. Because there is a life after this that will also bring unimaginable joy. So I'm telling you, from my heart and hopefully straight to yours, happiness exists. I promise with all my heart that it comes. I know that depression does not last. It may come back and it may be hard, but it leaves and light overcomes the darkness. Happiness exists and is worth it. It's worth waiting for. That's the end of the quote. I just want to say right now that it gets better. It gets so much better that I can't even explain to you how much better it gets. How satisfying life can be. How joyful life can be. There is hope. He never leaves your side. How he's never left your side, even though it feels like he has. It's so important to me for you to know that it gets better. That with all of my heart and all my soul and all of my very being, I promise you it gets better. I know it from my very personal life experiences that I've had. The scripture that I want to share today is Luke 1, 78-79. It says, Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. The quote of the day is from Aristotle, and he said, Happiness is the meaning and the purpose of life, the whole aim and end of human existence. Additionally, Joseph Smith says, happiness is the object and design of our existence and will be the end thereof if we pursue the path that leads to it. I promise you, I promise you, I promise you with all my heart that it gets better. That life is worth living. That hope is never lost. That things will be okay. That you will have a happily ever after. I wish I could tell you when this will happen for you, but I know with all my heart that life gets better. It does. The word of the day for today is superfluous. I hope I said that right. And it means redundant, unneeded, not required, excess, extra, spare to spare, remaining, leftover, useless, unproductive, and so on. I want you to remember that you are not superfluous. You are necessary. You are important. You are essential. You have a purpose. You are extremely important to this world and to this life. And we need you. We need your light. So although it feels... The pain never, ever, ever ends and it always comes back. It doesn't. It will leave. Things will get better and I promise you that joy exists. Happiness exists. It will get better. Stay tuned for part two. I have a lot more to say about this topic. One of the reasons I'm saying this is because I hadn't recorded the episode until now. And I was going to record it earlier and then a few things happened today that I needed to hear in order to record this episode. I know that Heavenly Father gives me the opportunity to have more experiences before I record or write something because he knows it's needed. There will be a part two to this, so watch out for that. Remember, you're important, you're needed. The world would not be the same without you. Thank you for listening. Embrace imperfection. Find meaning, satisfaction, and joy from the journey. I'm Kyra, and this is Imperfectly Broken, the podcast. Do, 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 do.